Good morning, Facebook Live. How are you? How are you out there today? Good morning. My phone is acting up. It won't let me turn it sideways um, like I normally do, and I don't know why that is happening lately, but it is. So if you'll give me just a second here straighten out my phone so it is Sunday morning and I pray that you are all doing well um, I know that many of you are probably out in your own churches this morning I hope you are that you're worshiping together like the Word of God teaches amen I guess I'm here at home for those who can't make it out or for those who live in rural areas where there are no churches for you to attend and so you you have church through the internet through social media and that's an awesome thing you know it's an awesome thing for people today because if you're shut in like I am um, I don't know what I would do uh, these days if I didn't have the internet and uh, could watch and hear people um, and have fellowship with people that way. So today I wanted to come to you because I have a message that I gave a week ago <clears throat> and what happened is I did the whole message with my phone turned sideways and didn't realize it and so uh didn't know it at high santa maria and didn't know it until i was completely finished with the message and then i found out that my video had been turned sideways through the whole thing so i want to repeat that message this morning and I know that we're only going to get probably halfway through it if we're doing doing well. Uh, we may make it halfway through it. So we want to get started right away. What the, what the message is about is the unbalanced teaching that is in the body of Christ today. Uh, what do I mean by that? I mean that there is an encouraging side to preaching and teaching the Word of God. There are words of God that are given to us for encouragement. Um, and I want to make note of here that a lot of those encouraging words and even prophetic encouraging words are being confused in the body of Christ today as positive thinking to the place that we can only hear things that are of a positive nature. So uh, people don't want you to, to tell them anything that they might need to hear. They just want you to tell them what they want to hear. And we have a scripture in the Bible that very clearly addresses that. Uh, when Paul was talking to Timothy and he said, Hi, Sab Shabazz, is it? Hello, good to, good to see you on here. Um, you know, Paul told Timothy that there would come a time when people would not uh, adhere to sound doctrine, but they would have tickling ears, uh, wanting people to to uh, preach to them only what they want to hear and that they would heap unto themselves teachers that would be this kind of a teacher that only preach what they want to hear. Now, if you don't see that happening in the body of Christ at large today, and I mean globally, um, it is happening and I'll just make you aware of it today. I don't know how you could not be aware of it. So, what we need today in the body of Christ is to be certain that we have discernment ourselves of these things 
that we don't get caught up in them. We don't get caught up in a wave of positive thinking or a wave of only encouraging words, but that we are, uh, we are enlightened by the Holy Spirit and by the Word of God. Hello, Adnan. Good to see you. To know that we have to have the balanced Word of God in our lives in order. There's a reason for that, and we'll get into that here in this Word. So I want you to differentiate between positive thinking and encouraging words from the Lord. Now I want to read real quickly to you this morning from Jeremiah 23, 1 and 2. And God is speaking to his people through Jeremiah the prophet here. He's also speaking, he's actually speaking to pastors in this, in this particular passage. And he says, uh, Jeremiah is prophesying to the pastors and he says, Woe be unto the pastors that destroy and scatter the sheep of my pasture, saith the Lord. Therefore, thus says the Lord of Israel against the pastors that feed my sheep, feed my people. You have scattered my flock and driven them away and have not visited them. I will visit upon you the evil of your doings. Now you can go and read that chapter uh, for yourself. But I, what I want to focus on, and, and that scripture is important because it deals with shepherds and how the shepherds deal with their people. That's the reason I read that to you. Jeremiah 23, later on in, in 25 through 30, God is prophesying against the prophets in the land of that day who were false prophets. They were prophets of Baal. He says, I've heard what the prophet said that prophesy lies in my name, saying, I have dreamed, I have dreamed. How long shall this be in the heart of the prophets that prophesy lies? Yea, their prophets of deceit of their own heart, which think to cause my people to forget my name by their dreams, which they tell every man to his neighbor, as their fathers have forgotten my name for Baal. The prophet that has a dream, now I want you to hear this part. The prophet that has a dream, let him tell a dream. He that has my word, let him speak my word faithfully. What is the shaft to the wheat, saith the Lord? Is not my word like a, as a fire, saith the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks the rock in pieces? Therefore, behold, now get this part. I am against the prophets, saith the Lord, that steal my words, everyone from his neighbor. What does he mean by that? What he's saying is that he has words for his people, but the prophets are prophesying in opposition to the word that God has for his people. Now, so God is against people who steal his word from his own. I, I want to approach this message from two sides. I want to approach it from words of encouragement and words of correction. How many of you know that there are both in the balanced word of God? Proper, right prophecy in a person's life or just the word of God properly uh, given, properly taught, and properly received will cause growth and balance in life. You know, one day the Lord, I had some books stacked up here on my table and I went to set a cup of coffee on those books and the Lord said to me, what if those books are not balanced and they don't hold your cup of coffee? And I knew that God was talking to me about being a balanced enough person to hold what he wanted to put into my life or into your life. Are you balanced enough in the word of God that he can place, um, you know, a mission in your life? 
that you can handle it. Whatever he has for you, that he can that he can place it in your life and you're balanced enough to handle it. I also had a dream years ago of um I, I was a mother at the time. I, was, I had two little children, actually three. And God gave me a vision of a little child in a high chair. I was the mother to this child. And God said, look at that child. And I looked at the child. And the child was skin and bones. And I knew instinctively that I didn't feed that child. I had forgotten to feed that child. Now listen to me when I say this to you today. Because I, and that dream horrified me. I, I can't imagine as a parent of a child not feeding my child. That would be a horrific, horrific thing. Uh, for me to do and for me to imagine about myself that I wouldn't feed my child. Look, God thinks of us in the same way. We are his children. He is going to feed us. Now, when we think of this, <clears throat> we think of a baby. What do babies eat? We know how that works. Babies have to have milk. Then they go to... Uh, you know, kind of a liquidy food, and then they go to solid food. But that takes time. There's a process there. So, and so it is with us and the Word of God. But God will give us the whole truth. I love that. Because God gives us the balanced diet that will cause us to do what? To grow up full and right. Amen? Okay, so stealing, I want to talk about people who steal the encouraging words of God from people. Now, what do I mean by that? When I was first born again, I couldn't get enough of the word of God in my life. I still can't. Um, and the And the things that I... I had to take into myself initially were words like there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I needed that in my life because I had grown up under condemnation. I grew up in a church that I felt like all there was with God were were laws that we couldn't keep. I didn't know the love of God. And so I needed that there is therefore now no condemnation for those who are in Christ Jesus. I needed that. That was milk for me. I needed to know that God is for me. And if he's for me, then who can be against me, right? I needed to know that many are the afflictions of the righteous, but the Lord delivers him out of them all. I needed to know those things. All those initial, and there's so many initial encouraging words that I needed to take in. I needed to know that Jesus is my healer. I needed to know that it was his, his will for me to be lifted up in my spirit. For me to have peace and joy and love in my life. Those are all uh, initial principle uh, foundational truths that I needed to have in my life to build upon from there. Amen? God, I see many preachers and teachers in the body of Christ today who discourage that kind of teaching. They discourage you from believing God for what he has said in his word. They discourage you from believing that you can ask and receive. 
Um, they, they discourage you from believing that God wants you to have good things in your life when the Bible clearly teaches that he does. So if you're a person today who discourages people, that is called stealing God's word from the people. And you will be held accountable for that, okay? Um, there are elementary principle things that God wants us to learn. We need to learn them. Um, we can be, see, when we come to the Lord, we have been weighed down and burdened with the weight of our sin that we didn't understand that we were even under until Jesus released us from our sin and set us free. And that is such good news. And that is good news that we needed to have initially but it's good news that we'll need to take with us from here forward. Okay, we'll always have to have those things as uh, foundational principles in our life. But we must move on from there too. You know, Jesus said, take my yoke upon you and learn from me for I am meek and lowly in heart and you will find rest for your souls. My yoke is easy and my burden is light. Isn't that an encouraging word? But we need to move on from there. And this doesn't mean that we won't perhaps continually have to contend for the faith in those elementary things, those uplifting, encouraging words of faith. We'll have to contend for those. We have to fight the good fight of faith to keep those things operating in our lives on a, on a daily basis. You know, um, correction, we're going to talk about words of correction here in, in, in a little while, if we get to it today. But um, you're going to have to correct yourself every day. It could be even momentarily You'll have to correct yourself with the word of God. And I don't think that people realize that, that you are actually using correction for yourself when you have to tell yourself repeatedly in a day's time over and over again, I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am, I am, I am, I am. I am not fearful. Because God has not given me a spirit of fear, but a power and love and of a sound mind. Fear has torment and perfect love casts out fear. So I will not be afraid. You have to remind yourself or you could say you're correcting yourself with the word of God every day. Isn't that true? Even moments in a day, you have to do that continually to keep yourself where you where you need to be with those elementary principle foundational things, okay? So in Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, it says there, so come on, let's, well, let me change, let me switch here. I don't want to read that translation. Hebrews 6, 1 through 3, therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundational, the foundation of repentance from dead works and faith and the faith toward God of the doctrine of baptism and laying on of hands and resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. And this we will do if God permits. But he's saying we have to go on. We have to grow up. I love this in Jude 3 three and four, he says, Beloved, when I gave all diligence to write unto you of the common salvation, it was needful for me to write unto you and exhort you that you should earnestly contend for the faith which was once delivered unto the saints. For there are certain men who creep in unaware who were before of old ordained to this condemnation. They're ungodly men turning the grace of God into lasciviousness and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Now see, 
what is this saying to us? I know that this is dealing with a particular situation with the Jews at that time. But let me tell you that you're going to have to contend for your faith in in the um, the encouraging words, but just in the very word of God itself, you're going to have to contend for it among men. Okay, there will come, you can have family members, you can have close loved ones in your close immediate family maybe, or friends, um, you know, people around you who are going to discourage you from believing what God has said in his word for you. And you're going to have to contend for that word, amen, and not allow yourself, like this was talking about, not allow yourself to be talked out of what God has promised you. So you hear in the verses that men will sneak in to teach you uh, otherwise, trying to steal the pure word of the gospel of Jesus unto you. And this can come from others, uh, family members. It can come from your own mind, like we talked about earlier. It can come from Satan himself with the fiery darts that he shoots at us, those arrows that we have to fight with and cast down vain imaginations according to the word of God. That is up to us to do. That is a correction for ourselves. And you may not call it that. You may not realize that that's what it is. But that is what it is. 1 Timothy 4, 15 and 16 says, Meditate upon these things. Give yourself wholly to them, that thy profiting may appear to all what why am i reading this is because god wants people to see your progress in the word of god he wants he wants people to be able to see your growth did you know that that is something that god uh, requires of us is that people can see our growth in him our growth from that foundational a place that we build upon it with even greater things in, in the word of God. God is looking for that. Paul was telling Timothy, let your profiting appear before all. Take heed unto yourself and unto the doctrine. Continue in it, for in doing this you shall both save yourself and them that hear you. The Bible is clear about meditating upon the word of God. You can read that in Psalms chapter 1, verses 1 through about 5. It talks about meditate on the word night and day, and then everything that you put your hands to will prosper. So there again, it's you, uh, you correcting your life, with the word of God. And that is going to bring about a, pro a progression of profiting in your life that people will be able to see and, and to know God is doing this, this awesome work in that person's life. And hopefully that person is you. Amen. Hallelujah. Um, Paul also said in one scripture that, you know, he watched over the, the, the people to make sure that they were receiving the pure, unadulterated word of God. Why? Because that is the only thing that is going to build you properly in the kingdom of God. It is going to grow you up in him. It is going to cause you to be strengthened in the way that is necessary for you to continue to follow the Lord. You know, when I was first called by God, I learned very quickly. I had to, number one, I had to know the voice of God. 
that was number one. I had to know the voice of God. Why? So that I could follow God. I could obey him. I could hear his instructions to me. Amen. It's not just about quoting the encouraging words of, of God for our lives. It's in knowing him. It is in being filled with his Holy Spirit, who the Bible says he guides us, he leads us into all truth. He will take from Jesus and will reveal it unto us. We follow God that way. And God began to show me just step by step by step. Ginger, if you want to follow me in what I have for your life, you're going to have to lay this thing down. Did he come to me in condemnation? No, he didn't. He came to correct me. Why? So that once I'd been corrected, something had been removed from my life that would hinder me from doing what he was calling me to do. So at that point in time, I had to make a decision. And my heart, like, uh, for instance, I was a smoker. I loved smoking. This was more than 30 years ago. And God said to me very clearly, Ginger, if you're going to follow me in what I have for you, you're going to have to lay that down. And I said, Lord, you know in the deep of my heart, all I want to do, God, is follow you. But I love smoking, and I have tried to quit smoking, and I cannot do it. What am I going to do, Lord? Well, that night I went to bed. I had peace because God taught me there again. God, one of the foundational principles in building with God is that you do not fear. No matter what, you do not fear and you do not fall into anxiety. You live in peace. Um, the only way that God can really operate in your life fully and completely is if you see to it that you are living in peace continually. You don't allow anything to come into your mind that will bring about confusion, like I said, anxiety, depression. None of that can exist in your mind if you're going to walk with God. So I went to bed that night, and the next morning I got up, and I was on the phone with somebody, and that was when I would always light up to smoke and the and the Lord just spoke to me and said take that package and put it in the garbage I walked over I obeyed I put the package of cigarettes in the garbage and you know what later on that day God said to me Ginger did you realize that you haven't smoked all day oh I couldn't believe it I just couldn't believe it he had taken that desire out of me completely removed it from me and I didn't have to worry about that anymore and I could go on then and I could follow God in the next thing that he had for me and the next thing and the next thing and the next thing but you see friends if you're going to follow God truly there are going to be times when he's going to bring words of correction to your life because they are there to benefit you, okay? Um, let's see. Second Peter 1, 12 through 15 says, Wherefore, I will not be... This is Peter. He says, you know, I will not be negligent to put you always in remembrance of these things, the word of God, though you know them and you're established in the present truth, but yet I think it mean as long as I'm in this tabernacle to stir you up and put you in remembrance of these things. So again, there are things in every day of your life that um, are foundational principles that you will have to remind yourself of, correct yourself with, and so on. Um, 
it's so important that we not only that we receive the word of God at any given time, but that it be the right word for the right time. When you're talking about uh, people teaching the word or the thing that I'm, I'm really seeing in the body of Christ today is that a lot of people are running to and fro seeking a word from the Lord a prophetic word, if you will, when what they really need to be doing is seeking the word himself, seeking God himself, and seeking him through his written word. You know, I've been there at a time in my life. I was there when I thought, you know, God, somebody has to has to say something to me because I don't know what you're saying to me. Well, the reason you don't know what he's saying to you is because you're not listening. <laughs> you're not listening. You should be before God in his presence, allowing the Holy Spirit to speak to you when you're in the stillness of God. You know, yesterday I posted something. It was kind of a, kind of a difficult day for me yesterday. Um, and I allowed it to be difficult, um, and a person read my post and sent me, uh, a song and said, I hope that this ministers to you. And, you know, the minute I turned that song, oh my goodness, it was so powerful. And all it was about was come before me and be still. And hear me and know that I am God. Wow. Yes, you know, sometimes that's the problem. People don't want to live in the presence of God. They want to run here, run there, get on the internet, social media, find a prophetic word, find another prophetic word, find another prophetic word. Friends, you can't, you can't live your life with God that way. That is not how God has intended it to be. To everything, Ecclesiastes says that to everything there's a season and a time and a purpose under heaven. I, I love what the scriptures say in Isaiah 50 about Jesus. It said, the Lord has given me a tongue of the learned that I should know how to speak a word in season to him that is weary. So you see there that there are words that we need for different times, okay? And God is the only one who can know what you need at a certain specific time in your life. Now, that doesn't mean that the prophetic doesn't have its place because it does or it wouldn't be in the scriptures. God knows us perfectly. He knows our lives perfectly. He knows what word we need, okay? And so we need to be seeking him for that. And we need to be in his written word for that. Um, you know, today, again, as I said, just to reiterate, I see so many people. I, I, I feel like I could look, I could open up the word of God like right now, open up to Ephesians chapter 4, <laughs> and where it talks about the gifts that were given to the body of Christ, the fivefold ministry gifts, where the pastor, the preacher, the teacher, and I could look at that and the prophet, and, and I could see that and see a big, huge sign over that fivefold ministry. And all that I could see was that the sign had prophet written on it. That's all I can see. Because it seems like with the body of Christ today, that's all they can see. Let me tell you that if that's all you're seeing today is prophecy and prophets, you're seeking prophets, you are you are in error. I can tell you that right now because God gave us the fivefold ministry for a purpose. You have the pastor, the teacher, the evangelist, the prophet. 
it's all for for a purpose and that purpose is to teach us a balanced life in Christ Jesus um, you know sometimes the word that you need to hear is not the word that you want to hear and so you 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 don't uh, you don't want to get in the presence of God because you know already that God might have something he needs to correct you in and you don't want the correction <laughs> Have you ever been there? Have you ever been there? All you want is encouraging words. Let me tell you something, friends, from experience. <clears throat> God never gives us a correction without encouraging us. You know, David in the scriptures in Psalms chapter 50, he cried out to God and he said, God, after he had sinned with Bathsheba, and he said, God, I know that you desire truth to be in my inward parts. And he said, God, strengthen me. Because he was so um, oppressed. See, the enemy can get in there when you're being corrected and he can oppress you. That isn't God. God does not oppress us when he is giving us words of correction or he's trying to teach us something that we need to be taught. You know, as parents, we teach our children. We correct them, right? Hebrews 12 talks about it so much. And I love that um, the scripture there. Well, first, let me read this to you. Proverbs 15, 31 through 33 says, The ear that hears the reproof of life abides among the wise he that refuses instruction despises his own soul but he that hears reproof get gets understanding the fear of the lord is the ins instruction of wisdom and before honor is humility now um i wanted to talk to you about because at this point God spoke to me by the Spirit as I was do as I was receiving this message, and He spoke, Peter, feed my sheep, and I want to read you the Hebrew definition of that. It means to feed or to to pasture these sheep. It meant to spiritually nurture by feeding people the word of God, the whole word of God, the whole counsel from the word of God. Amen. You don't just, you can't just pick this and pick that when you're a child and you sit down to eat a balanced meal <laughs> and you want the dessert only, right? But you got to have your vegetables, you need your meat, you need the fruit, right? You need the balanced meal. But sometimes that's not what we want. But here in the, in the Hebrew, or in the Greek, excuse me, when Jesus said to Peter, feed my sheep, what it really meant was, I want you to spiritually nurture my people with the word of God. Oh, I love that. I love that. You know, then we can go to John 21 and Jesus, when he called Peter and he said to Peter, Peter, do you love me? And he said, Lord, do you know I love you? And he said, well, go feed my lambs. And then he turned to Peter and he said, Peter, do you love me? Again. And Peter said, Lord, you know I love you. And he said, well, feed my sheep. And then he said, Peter, do you love me? The third time. And Peter said, Lord, you know, I love you. And he said unto him, Lord, thou knowest all things. You know that I love you. And Jesus said unto him, feed my sheep. That's a big task, my friends, if you don't know it already. When you are, when you are called to be a part of the fivefold ministry, that is a huge task. Uh, responsibility and the Bible very clearly says that if you are a teacher or a pastor etc 
you are held accountable for everything that you uh, teach, okay? Um, Acts 20, 28 says, Take heed therefore unto yourselves and to all the flock over the which the Holy Ghost has made you overseers to feed the church of God which, ha which he has purchased with his own blood. Can you imagine that that is your responsibility to teach people who have been purchased with the blood of Christ? You're responsible for what you teach them. Do you know that even as a, a lay person, they call them, uh, anybody who knows the Lord, that you are responsible for what you say about the word of God to another person? You can be called a teacher in just that because you're teaching somebody something about the Word of God and you'll be held accountable. How do I know that? Because the Word of God says that you will be held accountable for every idle word that you speak. Okay? So if you speak the Word of God, make sure that you you are what the scriptures say you study to show yourself approved rightly dividing the word of god i think that that's what i'm going to stop with today it, it isn't a light matter to to be one who teaches to be one who prophesies and i want you to know today one thing be careful that you're receiving unto yourself right teaching in this day, okay? And in this hour, because there are a lot of teachings out there that are not right. And they're not going to equip you for the days that are ahead. If all you get is flowery prophecy all the time, all the time, all the time, that's your daily diet. When things come in the world that you're going to have to deal with, you're not going to have the equipping that you need to go through those things, to navigate your way through. And let me just say, if you don't have that personal, close relationship with the Holy Spirit in the presence of God, you won't be able to hear the directives of God that will be the thing that navigates you through life into what? Into full prosperity in God. God says, I would that you prosper and be in health even as your soul prospers. But the only way that we can get there is by the word of God and by the Holy Spirit of God. The Holy Spirit takes this word and he leads and guides, directs our path with it. He takes from the Father and he speaks it unto us, whatever God's will is for our lives at any given moment. And if we will follow, if we will obey, then we're going to prosper and we're going to be in health even as our souls prosper. I hope that this spoke to somebody out there today and also know, again, if you're a teacher or a preacher, an evangelist, a prophet, a pastor, you will be held accountable for how you feed God's sheep, okay? You will be held accountable, so make sure that you're hearing from God as to how to rightly teach his people in this day. I bless you. I thank God for you. And listen, if there's anyone of you out there today who doesn't yet know the Lord, the Bible says that the word is nigh you. It's even in your mouth. The word, it's only a word. And it's in your mouth. You have the power in your mouth to be saved. All you have to do is believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus died on your behalf, that he is your salvation, 
and you shall be saved. And let me tell you also, to follow that up, you need to get in into the Word of God. You need to get a pastor and a teacher over your life. You need to study God's Word. And for, for heaven's sake, know that the Word of God says that when you're saved, you are absolutely saved. You don't have to be saved over and over and over again. If you sin, we have an advocate with the Father. His name is Jesus. And all you have to do is confess your sins, and he's faithful and just to forgive you your sins and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. And then you go on with him. You continue on with him. Keep going, keep going, keep building. God never wants you to stop or to leave off with him, no matter what happens in your life. Things can happen that you think you you mess up so badly, but God says, don't give up, don't quit, don't walk away from me, because I am your salvation. I am the one who will cause you to prosper, but if you walk away from me, you're on your own. So don't walk away. Stay with the Lord. I love you, and I'll see you next time right here on Trunk Treasures with Izzy Harriet and Company. Bye-bye for now. Have a great day.